Today we're talking about form validation in Blazor. Decent validation will help guide your users to inputting the correct data. This will result in less errors being submitted from the form and it helps protect your application from malicious input and vulnerabilities. So in this video, I'm gonna be going through everything you need to know to get started using form validation in Blazor. We're gonna be going through some of the basic scenarios. We're gonna be going through some of the more complex scenarios. We'll even mention libraries like Fluent Validation and how you can use that. So here we are in Visual Studio. I have a form that is bound to a person model and the form has three inputs for a age and email and a name and a single submit button that as soon as we hit the submit button we'll just output a message saying it's been submitted. Right now if we hit that the form is successfully submitted. If we go and have a look at our model, our person model, you can see here that I've set some data annotations uh, relating to each of the validation that's required on each of those fields. So each of these attributes comes straight from the component model, model data annotations library that handles a lot of the logic for us. All we really need to do is wire that up to our form to get it to work. So to enable to do this, we just need to add a component called the data annotations validator. And then we need to specify a validation me message for each of those fields we will need to actually tell uh, the Blazor component which of the fields we're gonna be targeting. So in this case, it'll be name. Then likewise, we can do the same for the other fields. So now when we hit the submit button, the data annotations validator will go and validate each of the fields against the attribute that's been specified on the model class and then display the appropriate message. These all are processed as soon as we tab actually over the uh, input or tab off of the input. And once we put all the values in successfully, we can now submit the form and that'll be successful. It's worth noting here that all that's happening here is the data annotations validator is really just giving our form input uh, invalid CSS class and the same with the message validation message, which means you can really easily customize this in the CSS and you certainly should. The default red that comes with it is absolutely awful. So having the validation messages show up uh, individually can be frustrating to some users. So Blazor gives us a validation summary component which will group all the messages together and displays it nicely so what we can do. And we try and submit this and then it'll process the name is valid. So it gives us an option to group all the messages together. So here we've used three of the built-in data annotation validators, required range and email address. There is a whole stack of them, everything from if you need to validate a credit card or a telephone number or a URL, there's a bunch of them. I will leave a list in the description below along with the source code for this video. You can find it down there. But if data annotations doesn't have the validation method you're looking for, Blazor makes it really easy to make your own. So here we got another form simulating a hotel booking and likewise, we have three inputs relating to dates and a date range between the check-in date and check-out. Let's say we wanted to make sure that our booking date only ever occurred in the future. So in order to check if this booking date always occurs in the future, what we're gonna do is data annotations doesn't provide anything like that. We need to make our own functionality. So what we're gonna do is we'll make our own future dates attribute and this needs to inherit from validation attribute I'm going to go control dot for it to recognize that and then it's going to be using the component model data annotations and then over here we need to override the is valid method and then we just need to put in our logic that's going to determine whether the date is in the future this value here that gets passed in is going to be the value coming from the input that we want to check here we're just making sure that the value being passed in is in fact date and if the date is earlier than today we are going to be creating or returning a new validation result with a string to show underneath the, the control. In our case, we are we're either using the error message. This uh, base property is really talking about the error message that someone would have uh, mentioned as an, a part of the attribute. If they don't, if nobody's bothered to put an error message in the uh, model class, then we're going to use a default message of 
the date must be in the future. Then otherwise our validation is, our validation result is gonna be a success, meaning it is valid. Okay, so once we've created our attribute, now we just need to actually go to the model and apply that attribute to our model. We don't actually need to do anything to the form already because we have a data annotations validator and we're already saying that we need to display the message for the booking date. Uh, from there, the data annotations validator will figure out what it needs to do based on whichever attributes we have up here. So if we run this now, we still have the booking successfully submitted, but if we go and change this to an earlier date, we'll see now that we get the message, the date must be in the future. Also, you'll see if I click the submit button, if I refresh this, See so if I click the submit button, we still get the message saying that it's successful, even though the validation is invalid. This is because our form, our form is being submitted on submit, meaning we're calling the submit code, we're calling this callback just when it gets submitted, whether it's valid or not. What we need to do is we really need to make sure that this is set to on valid submit so that it only calls the event handler when it's valid. So that works great, but we're, at this stage, we're still validating against a single field. We have field level validation and we have class level or submit level validation as well, meaning the validation only gets applied when we submit the entire form. So very often you'll need to use multiple properties in your model to check whether a input is valid or not. So let's go and do this here where we want to make sure that the checkout date always occurs after the check-in date. So to do this, we need to make sure that our entire model is available for uh, validation and not just the individual fields. We do this by implementing the I validator object, go control dot to in implement the members. And we just need to write some code for our validates method over here. And in this situation, I want to just make sure that the form is invalid if my checkout date is earlier than my check-in date. If that's the case, I'm going to return a validation result with the appropriate error message saying checkout date must be after the check-in date. And we're the second parameter that this takes is a list of any of the properties that we want to say are invalid. So in this case, I wanna just specify the property checkout date so that we'll see the error. So now if we make the checkout dates earlier than the check-in date, we get the message or likewise, if we suddenly make the checkout date occur in the future, this will only take effect on the actual clicking of the submit button, but there we have it. So at this stage, our data annotations validator is still just uh, validating our top level properties in this class. If we ended up having a complex type, that is another, uh, another property that had its own set of properties, we would need to do something a bit more. Let's stick with our hotel booking and let's say that we needed to store guest information inside our hotel booking, but we didn't want to store each of the guest properties individually. We wanted to rather just add our entire guest model to our hotel booking. So let's see how we would do that. So add property and we can call it guest details. So at this stage, we are still validating the fields from the hotel booking class, but our validation is being ignored for the properties within the guest model. So if we hit submit, you'll see it's not telling us that our guest name is required or that the uh, email is invalid. This is because Blazor doesn't actually support this straight out of the box. However, Microsoft has made a library available to us to deal with this. And we're going to install the microsoft.asp.net core.components.dataannotations.validation and there's a specific version. So what this library does is extends the component model.dataannotations library and it gives us access to a complex, sorry, validate complex type attribute. Head back to our form and instead of using the data annotations validator, we now need to use the object graph data annotations validator. So now if we try and run this and try and submit our form, you'll find now we are including the validation of our guest names alongside our 
booking dates. So there's one caveat to using this library, even though it is a Microsoft library, it's, and here it says that it fills the validation experience gaps using the data annotations validator component. The package is currently experimental. And then Microsoft proceeds to give us a nice warning here, telling us that the experimental features provided are for the purpose of feature viability and may not ship with the next stable version of Blazor. So if this is a problem for you and your team, there are a couple of options out there. A real popular scenario is to use Fluent Validation, which was a very popular .NET library for validation that a lot of people have used and still use in the MVC world. So while Fluent Validation doesn't provide integration with Blazor directly out of the box, there's a bunch of third-party libraries that do this. So we're going to head back to our NuGet Package Manager console and we're going to install blazor.fluent validation and here we're going to add a spa booking to our hotel booking. So our model class largely looks the same but you'll notice this time we don't need any of the attributes. Instead our actual rules for our validation is going to reside in a validator class. So we're going to make a new class called spa booking validator. Here we're going to reference the Fluent Validation Library and we're going to have our Spa Booking Validator inherit from Abstract Validator and we're going to specify the type of model that our validator is going to be validating. And here in our validator constructor is where we're going to specify the rule for each of our booking fields. So specify booking and booking dot booking guest name here we're going to make sure that it's not empty and we're going to say the message that we're going to display is going to be guest name is required and similarly we can supply rules for the rest of our properties then we need to tell our blazer page itself to use our fluent validator instead of our data annotations validator that we were using in the other example. So here we're going to specify a fluent validation validator validator. Now when we handle the submit of our form we are going to check if the fluent validator is actually valid by calling the validate method. Uh, this is a async task so we're going to call the asynchronous version and that means we need to await this and then we say if it's true we are just going to set our is submitted equals to true but we still haven't told our edit form which type of validator it's going to use so we need to specify the fluent validation validator component and we need to give a reference to the variable we are using for our validation. Save that and let's run that and see if we fluently validate the form this time. So now if we run that and we try and execute this, our form is being validated just as we expected. If you'd like to see how to display enums in Blazor, watch this video, or if you want tips on how to be a better software developer, check out this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.